right, welcome Sim fans back to the channel, Sim Fanatic with you. I thought I would just go ahead and show all of you how to program the FMS for the Zebo 737 that we'll be flying later tonight uh, from Vancouver to Las Vegas. Beautiful fly Tampa, Las Vegas, of course. And so I thought I would just do a quick overview of programming the FMS for the Zebo 737. Now I realize there are a lot of tutorials and that out there but I thought I would just uh, for those of you that follow my channel or that are just stopping by to have a look uh, this may be a value given that it's the updated Zebo, it's the up updated FMS with the updated air nav data so with that being said let's go ahead and get started so there's several ways to get your um, your flight plan there's several tools I've talked about them before like project fly sim toolkit pro uh, you can just use SimBrief to start with, but you know, first thing you need to do is you, you'll want to get a flight planner program, and I'll have links below for those different um, uh, utilities or tools that you can use. I prefer Sim Toolkit Pro because it's a very robust program. It has a, a, a live map, it connects into X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator. I know we do, I, I mainly fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I like to mix it up every once in a while with the flight in X-Plane because I still love X-Plane for the Zebo and for the IFR flights like this. You, uh, I use uh, the SimBrief export out of Sim Toolkit Pro, which I really do like. And so once you start, you know, you, you plan your flight and it will actually take weather into account. But to get started with, um, I, once the sim brief uh, is done and loaded, as you can see here, here's some key pieces of information. Summary and fuel, routing and impacts, and this is a big one because this will show you the routing. Of course, this is Vancouver, CYVR, and then KLAS, Las Vegas. And then you have your, your course here and your waypoints and your standard instrument departure and, of course, your stars and, and coming in to Sunset 4. So we'll be talking about that here in a minute. The next tab, all these are under OFP, by the way, times and weights. This is very important because it shows your block time and your um, scheduled time. So we know that our flight's going to be approximately two hours and 40 minutes. So that will include like pushback and, and taxi and that sort of thing. Number of passengers. I do use PACX. I'm not going to use PACX for tonight's flight, but I am going to use Active Sky. But uh, you can plug the passenger information, the cargo payload, zero fuel weight, which is ZFW, and um, and then your, your trim and all that stuff. So um, really quick, wanted to go over that because we're going to get into that and use those later. So to start with, we need to get this uh, bird powered on so we can start programming the FMS. So so first things first, we want to make sure we have the battery on. And I'm, I'm going by a paper uh, checklist, by the way. There is an electronic one included with this. Uh, DC voltmeter, once we do that, we got to turn that to battery. And then that way we can see that's drawing from the battery. We're going to have to um, click on our master caution. Got some rain here today. It's a bit of a thunderstorm, which is kind of neat. A um, bunch of aircraft taking off and that. I use global traffic, by the way. All right, so we got the master uh, caution off. We're going to go back up to our overhead panel. We got to make sure our hydraulic pumps are off, and we want to make sure all our fuel pumps are off, which they are. So that's all good. Interior lights is required. It's a little dark, um, but uh, I think we'll be good for today's flight. And ground power, we want to go ahead and connect on. Now, if this is off, um, simply what we can do is we just go down here, go over to our EFB, and we go to ground services, connect the GPU. Once that ground power unit is on, now you'll see this is blue. So now we can turn the ground power to on. So first thing now, now we get to the FMC for the first part. We need to enter our fuel and payload. So we're gonna refer back to our Adobe, um, or our flight plan rather. So I'm gonna go over here and we need to go back and we need to do fuel weight and balance here. And so first thing we do is we go to payload. So we got to get our payload information. So to do that, we're going to go back to our flight plan. So I'll bring that up here. And now that we have that up, we need to go to times and weights and just scroll down here. Now we can see fuel and that's in thousands of pounds. So that'd be 20,100 pounds. So, and so with that, what we're going to do is we are going to put in 20,100 pounds and I might just put that a little bit over here so we can, you can see what I'm doing here so um, and then the pay payload you know so fuel will go 20,100 so we hit enter so that's loaded there 
there's going to be a key thing I'm going to come back to um, some fans on that. Now, payload, we'll click on that. And so we can hit, like, each zone how much payload we want to do. I like to go ahead and just, and you can go in through this and get even more details. What I like to do is just set uh, a payload total. So, again, to find that, we got to go to payload here. So it's 42,400 for this particular flight. So we're just going to type that into our counter there. And then once that's done, we can go back. Uh, to the payload and so now we're kind of like looking at um, you know what's our zero fuel weight and I've always noticed that it's a little bit off but as long as it's in the general vicinity like if it's 3,000 pounds or so off I I, I, I count it as good uh, maybe that's not the right way to do it but I, I count it as good okay so we got our payload 42,400 we've got our fuel at 20,100 and approximately zero zero fuel weight right within that margin of error of uh, three to five thousand pounds which is good um, we can see our center of gravity and zero fuel weight and how that's impacted there. So once that's done, sim fans, the, the big thing that you want to do and remember to do is make sure to turn the flight plan off for now. We'll get back to that. But you want to make sure that, so it says 20,100. So if we go over here and we take a look at our fuel tanks, that's the center fuel tank and left and right fuel uh, tanks. And of course, that isn't even close. You know, that's what, roughly 7,700 pounds. We need 21,100. Well, the reason for that, Sim fans, is because we haven't called the fuel truck. So very important thing to do is go to ground services. Um, and, oops, I messed that up. Go to fuel weight and then do fuel. Well, first we'll go outside and we'll see there's no fuel truck, right? Okay, plane taking off there, that's so cool. So we go back in here. And then we'll call fuel truck. Now if we look off our right wing, there's a fuel truck. We go back outside. We see the fuel truck. And more importantly, sim fans, we go down here and we'll actually see it fueling up in real time, which is kind of cool. And you can actually change those settings. If we go back here and um, we want to get to configure and customize and realism so align time by the way i like to put short on that um, refuel time we can leave that as real because by the time we get through the computing of the fms it'll it'll be ready um, it'll be loaded in that and all good um, i usually leave these all there um, but the other thing i like to configure in the hardware i always want to check is the nose wheel access if it's just on if you're using i'm using the tpr pedals if it's just on, they don't work, I need to switch that to yaw. Okay. So now we move up to our IRS. So this is where we're going to, that's where we talked about the IRS alignment and that being real. That'll, if it's set to real in the realism settings, it's going to take like 15 minutes to set. Um, and so you're just going to sit around twirling your thumbs for 15 minutes because you can't, you can start programming the F FMS, but I like to do it in short so I know everything's good. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and we're going to test this. It's, uh, first, we got to turn it to nav. Once we have it as nav, now we should be able to go up here and uh, test it. And so, as you can see, those lights come on, and those just to show you if things fault or, or, or fail, you know that all the lights indicators work. Um, and then that'll go off, and you'll see these are aligned. So that takes about five minutes, maybe not even that when you have it on short. It might be just a couple minutes, if I remember correctly. So now that that's done. Go back to our cockpit. Now we see that um, things are aligning. So uh, now's the meat and potatoes of this uh, overview, okay? Tutorial overview, whatever you want to call it. So to do that, we're simply going to go, and I've got some of my quick buttons uh, put in here. So now it notice it says enter IRS position. So that's okay for this. So we're going to go to FMC, position initialization so now we're going to plug in our our airport so we're going to go to cyvr and then we're going to hit that's our reference point now we got to this is a scratch pad down here so we got to click this mfd button now we get that um, essential coordinates um, for you know longitude and latitude so we get that in there and we just click there now we've got it plugged in and the irs can go ahead and start uh, lining actually to this gate of where we're at very important to have that stuff done. Once that's done, you hit route. Now on our scratch pad, we still have CYVR for Van uh, Vancouver there. So we're gonna click there to get in our original uh, origin, rather. And then KLAS for KLAS for Las Vegas. And we hit that for our destination. And then the flight today, AAL 642 is what we're gonna use. 
So that's in there. Once that's done, we go to perform initialization, cost index. So where do you find the cost index? Well, you can simply do this, SIM fans. Go back to your um, flight plan and just scroll to the top. We'll notice CI5, so we know our cost index is simply five. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter five in our scratch pad and then we'll click that so we know our cost index is five. And then for reserve, I like to do 1.0. And then just click ZFW and that'll give our zero fuel weight. So we're set there. Um, and we also need to plug in our altitude and our cruise altitude. So now you know, where do you find that? Okay, well I just typically look, um, sim fans, when you're doing your route, let me go back to the summary. So it shows there are 350, so we know we'll be at 35,000 feet. So we're gonna go 350 and hit that into our altitude. You can put this information in if you want, some fans. I typically don't, but if you want to get even more accurate, you can look at your cruise wind speed, put that by the direction and, and, the, and the, uh, uh, the wind speed, uh, even the temperatures if you want. I always skip that. But um, And then for those of you that are in Europe, you can, of course, change your transition altitude. In the U.S., we're at 18,000. So we're going to hit Execute. So now we have it active on the performance. We need to now go to N1 Limits, so we'll click on that. Typically I do a takeoff two and it automatically select a climb one. So that's just basically your performance rate as you're uh, climbing out to your um, 35,000 feet. Once that's plugged in, we'll go to takeoff. Typical, uh, typical 737 Boeing, you do five uh, degrees of flaps. Now all you gotta do is click the CG and that'll give you a 28.0 and it'll say trim five. So now we gotta do some bands. If I can remember what I had these mapped as, give me one sec. Um, so at this point, now we just gotta make sure we get our trim set to five. That's gonna be good. But, but I can use my beautiful Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant. It's got that nice trim wheel, so we set that to five and we're good to go there, okay. Next thing we need to do is click on V1, VR, and V2. Now, um, what we do there is we'll want to set V2 in our panel for speed. So that's going to be up above. So we said what, 151. So we're going to set that as 151. But then we also want to go here and set this to 35,000 feet. Unless of course you're on with ATC and then they're going to tell you where your first um, altitude is if you, if you have to step up. So now we got 35,000 feet there. Okay, very good. So now we're just going to go back to our FMC. Um, now we need to set our departure and enter our, our route. So now we'll click on departure and we need to go to our flight plan. And then this is where I go to routing. And this is what I'm, I'm going to be paying attention to now some fans that I had highlighted there. And can you see that? Yep, you can still see that. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to enter our um, our departure. So our departure, of course, is uh, we're going to be taking off at 26 left. So runway 26 left. Um, we are going to be using, um, we're going direct to YVR. So um, we're not really even using a SID. We're just going to go direct YVR. Now, there is YVR1 here, um, but you'll typically notice a, a SID as kind of like the um, star standard approach will be kind of like sunset four, but it'll have something rather than just direct, but we're doing direct. So, and so we got 26 left, we'll hit route and we'll hit activate. Okay. Now we'll get, we'll get back and we can ignore insufficient fuel because it's, it's loading up. But, um, so now the next thing we want to do is of course set our arrival. So now we can go to our arrival and that's K last. And so we hit that. If we look at our arrival, now we work kind of backwards from right to left. We start with left to right, right to left. That's how I do it anyway. So we're gonna be um, flying into 19 left. And this is our nav. I kind of like flying in, um, I like doing an ILS approach. You know what, I think for tonight's flight, I'm gonna go ahead and just fly in to 26 left. Now usually your approaches and stuff will be a little different based on that. So let's see what we have for options. If I do two six left, if we do two six left, will we be able to do sunset four? 
And we are. We can do sunset four, so we'll do sunset four. And then um, our transition, we'll see how funky this is. It might be might be a bad idea, but this is our transition, so you want to do BTY. I just want to do an ILS approach. I like doing ILS approaches more than RNAV, so I changed that up a bit from our flight plan, which you can see I could do. So then we hit execute. So now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have our route set. So we have our legs, so we'll click on our legs button. Now, notice BTY was our, um, if we look at our uh, flight plan, that's our, our, our uh, one of our intersections and then transition to Sunset 4. So we need to get um, YVR in here and FMG. So all we got to do, sim fans, is just type in YVR into our scratch pad. Click, a, click where the button is. It's not going to override it. You hit it and notice it drops the BTY down there and then it has an open slot. And we could just use that to type in FMG because that's our next waypoint. So we'll do FMG, and then it's BTY. So now we, we, we're, we're, we're open, so now I just click on BTY, get that in the scratch pad, put that, insert that where that's empty, and hit execute. And now it's gonna reprogram our um, speed and our altitude and do that all automatically. Technology, I tell you, it's beautiful. And the next last thing we need to do is, well, not the last thing, but for programming the FMC, what we need to do now is we need to make sure we don't have any discontinu discontinuities or if we have anything that says vector because we're not flying uh, with ATC. So we need to make sure we don't have any of that. So I'm just going to look through, hitting the, hitting the next, previous page, next page, and just making sure I don't have any discons or vectors. And as long as I don't have any discons or vectors, and notice we have runway 26 left, we should be good to go. So that looks good, fans. Now, just if you ever see any uh, vectors or discontinuities, all you have to do is click the button underneath, and then it gets to your scratch pad, and then click, if, say, if FMG said discontinuity or it said vector, just click that and it'll overwrite that. Easy enough, right? Easy peasy. The last thing we need to do is we need to verify that um, in our map mode that it looks good to us and we can adjust it if not. So I usually go out to about you know 40 or so. Um, I think that's a good distance to be out to look at the flight plan, maybe 20. And then over here, we want to change it from map, and that's kind of hard to see, so let me scroll over here. So you want to change it from, right now it's on map, to plan, and so you can see your MFD and what it's doing there. And then I've got a button that's map, so we can see both the MFD, and then I can hit the step button. So we're going to hit the step as we go through each one of these. So notice it's, we're going to go straight from the airport to YVR, we're going direct, remember. So we're going to step, then we go to FMG, step, and you notice this CTR, that's, that's what we're on. So BTY, step, my cal, step, fuzzy, step, Traeger, step, I pumpy, step, uh, nip, Z O. And if you need to, don't worry if you have to scroll in because we're getting kind of congested there. So if you need to scroll in, again, my buttons, I have still haven't learned these yet for since I switched it and I got the alpha. So I got the alpha. Um, there we go. Got the alpha flight control. So then next one is sunset. Next one is Kim, Kimmy. Next one is Chips. All right, and then Poker, uh, Prino, Chino, and Relin. And look at that, this is looking really good. And then Runway 26, that, that looks like a really good approach. That's it. So as long as it all looks fine to you when you run through the map mode, you're gonna be fine. So um, now important, don't forget. <laughs> don't forget, Simbans, once you do that, that you gotta switch this back to map. Okay, and then I usually put this back to 10, which we already had it at 10, so we're ready to go when we take off. All right, Sim fans, so honestly, that is it to programming the FMC. If you like this video, you like this overview and tutorial, please smash the thumbs up button, do a like, do subscribe. Remember to turn on alerts so you get notifications of uh, any fresh new content. I'm always posting videos and content. Um, Again, my channel's mainly focused on Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it's everything simming, including, obviously, X-Plane. So until next time, sim fans, as you know, as I always end with, blue skies and take care. We'll see you soon.